Hey guys, good evening to you all. I pray that you guys have been having a wonderful day today. Um, I've had an excellent day myself. Um, currently, it is about to rain. It's been it's thundering a little bit. You guys know I love that type of stuff. So uh, if you hear the rain or the thunder, that's that's what the noise is going to be in the background, if you hear it, okay? But I'm going to still go on with the message anyway, okay? Um, it's actually one dream that I had, but the Lord said there are two separate messages. So I'm going to do two videos. Okay. Um, if this message is for you, it will resonate with your spirit. Um, and even if it's for you, I would definitely take this back to God, uh, to get further instructions and insight to whatever it is you need to know. Okay. Or your next steps. Okay. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys the dream and then I'm going to hop into, uh, the scriptures. Okay. All right. So let's get into this dream. It's pretty lengthy, but I'm going to go ahead. I can remember it off the top of my head. I, although I have it written in my notes. So in this dream, I was going for a celebration. I wasn't aware of at, at first what the celebration was for. All I knew was that it was like a surprise thing. So when I had arrived, I had taken notice that I was at this beautiful big house. It was on this huge land. I mean, the land was, I, I can't even, it was just so big. It was so big and it was so beautiful. And, um, and I love that type of stuff. So when I looked at the house and I saw all the land all around, I was like, yes, where are we at? I love, I was thinking, I love this. So I looked around and I saw a whole bunch of ducks outside and there were a lot of baby ducks over there. And I was like, well, I don't want to bother the ducks cause I don't want to upset them for bothering the babies. But then when I went over there to them, all the little baby ducks started to follow me. And I was like, whoo, this is, this is really nice. Like these little ducks like me. So then when I got there, there were a lot of children that were there. And I was like, who are all these children? Because I didn't know not one of these little children in the dream. It's a whole bunch of children. And um, they kind of ran up to me. They were all running up to me and wanting to hug me and hold on to my leg and pick them up and all this kind of stuff. And so I walk with them over uh, up the stairs um, to get ready to go inside of the house. I feel you, Holy Spirit, to get ready to go inside the house. But before we walked in, it was this big old bunny that came out of nowhere. I mean, the bunny was huge. It was a huge bunny. And um, he was so friendly. And he kind of come behind the ducks following me. So when he came behind the ducks following us up the stairs, then the bunny came in for a little selfie. So it was, the, it was just like the, they were listening to what I was saying. I was saying, okay, you know, get over here, stand around. We're going to get together. I'm going to come low to y'all guys level and we're going to take some selfies with this little bunny. So the bunny was kind of like in the middle and all the kids were around it. And I was right there behind them, right in the, in the selfie. And we were all smiling and the bunny was being very cooperative. It was not going crazy. It was just extremely friendly and loving. I was petting it and all this stuff and the kids were petting it and everybody was just having a ball out there with these animals. So then there was a relative that appeared because there's only two people in this dream that I recognized. Um, it was a relative at this point that appeared at the storm door. And when they appeared at the storm door, they looked kind of mad. They look like, what are you doing out there with these animals when we have this party going on for you on the inside? And I was like looking at them like, you know, what are you doing here with this attitude? You know, if it's a party for me, why do you have an attitude? And we weren't having words, but it was like the person was talking and I was reading their minds. So it's like we were talking through our minds or something. I don't even know how to explain it. I just knew what the person was saying or thinking or however it was going. They were standing there just, you know, arms folded and just looking like, you know, I'm in control of this and you should be in here. And it was just really weird. And so when the relative popped up to the door, I kind of could see a whole bunch of people on the inside of the house waiting on me to come in. And um, the bunny ran off. The bunny took off. I mean, his buddy was like, shoop, gone. And, um, so I go inside the house 
when I get in the house, there's a lot of different things going on. Um, I see, you know, like a nice spread for me and I realized it was my birthday. They were celebrating that. I kept saying, okay, so everybody showed up for my birthday, but I was like, I don't know these people. So, um, I looked over and I see this beautiful cake because of course purple's my favorite color. So it's this beautiful purple and white cake. It was absolutely beautiful. And I was like, Ooh, I can't wait to eat this. So at this point, somebody that I knew, because again, there was only two people from this dream that I actually know in waking life. So at this point, somebody I knew had come in and I remember telling somebody, oh, that's my friend from out of town. And I was like, well, who is with her? So she had come with somebody that I didn't even know. I didn't know this person from a can of paint just showed up. And um, so when they showed up, they came in atmosphere kind of shifted when this other person had come in and so when they come in we're kind of you know everywhere that the person was that I was I would catch them whispering whispering and I said I know doggone well that she did not come to my celebration to gossip about me right in front of my face I said I know doggone well she did not so then um all throughout the time that I was in there you know, just relaxing and enjoying everything that was done for me. Um, she was just looking with, with, I mean, I can't, it's just an envious, jealousy type of vindictive, snakish type of look. It just did not look right. And just had her hand over her mouth and was just gossiping in the female's ear. So they laughing and joking, laughing and joking. And um, so I was talking to this girl that was in there with me. And I said, I don't know why, you know, anybody would come to something that's another person's celebration and behave like that. And the girl was like, I said, did you notice her doing this? And then the, the, the other female was like, uh, I really wasn't paying them no mind. She said, but I did notice a couple of things. And she said, I don't know why anybody would come to anything and just behave like that myself. I don't understand why. And then in my mind, I was saying, I just pray to God that this person go ahead and go take your friend and go ahead and leave. Because first of all, I don't know her. This is not her celebration. This is not yours. And this is what I was thinking. And then, um, uh, there's some, there's a part that I'm forgetting. Um, yeah, the, the person I, I was saying in the dream, the person wants my undivided attention and throughout the dream, because I wasn't giving her my undivided attention on my special day, the person got really mad. So eventually she came over to me. She said, I'm about to leave. And I said, well, okay, I'll catch you later. And then, so she got a friend and it was still, you know, she looked fury. She looked kind of mad for whatever reason. And then, you know, her and the friend said, okay, come on. She don't care if I'm leaving. Okay, fine. And so then she went on ahead and left with whoever the female is that she came with. Um, and so let's see, that ends the dream. So let's get into, um, what the Lord was speaking to me. Let me see if I can pick up these again. Hold on one minute. Um, <clears throat> Looking for what the Lord wanted me to read with you guys really quick. Hold on. Uh, let Let's see. Okay, so basically what the Lord was speaking to me concerning this dream is that there are a lot of people that don't really care for you guys. They don't really care for me. They don't really care for you guys, okay? There are people in our families. There are people uh, that we have known from our past that don't really... Oh, there's another part I forgot. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so let me go back. The last part of this dream was when they left, I scrolled onto my Facebook account. I got down to the person's name and I blocked them. They were blocked forever. The Lord was like, this is it. I blocked them. And I, when I woke up, I heard the Lord say, you gave this person an opportunity and they blew it. So now I can get back to what the Lord, what the Lord wants me to say to you guys. 
Um, and that's actually not the first time I've ever had a dream about Facebook and unblocking or blocking. I mean, I've only had at least two dreams like that, I believe. But um, so. Yeah, so what the Lord was saying to me was that there are some people who will try to hitch a ride with you when you're going to a top to the top. There are some people that will only be with you because of where they, they, they know that you have a bright future. They, they can sense that it's something going on and they want to be a part of that. They don't really like you. They really don't have anything in common with you because they may be attached to the old person that you were. They're not attached to who you are now. So what the Lord was saying to me that a lot of these people you will have to pray. You will have to send them away and you will have to just pray for their healing and their deliverance, but that you cannot allow them to come in and wreck what it is that he's doing. Okay. Because this was a celebration that was given for, in my honor. So when the Lord is giving something in your honor, guys, you, you have the right um, to get to choose who's going to be a part of that. And if God shows you ahead of time, people that he does not want to be a part of what he's doing, you have to take heed to that. Because see, this is not the first time I've dreamed about this particular person. The first dream I had about this person, this person was an act, they turned it to a snake. Okay, so this stuff is really serious. This is God's warning. And we have to be really, uh, we have to pay attention. We cannot um, just take these dreams and not pay attention to what it is that the Lord is trying to reveal to us. Okay, so, um, and then sometimes when the Lord takes people out of your life, you sort of miss that interactions uh, with people once in a while, even if you have an interaction by phone, you sort of miss those types of things. But what you begin to discover from the separation time that you've had from certain people, you begin to discover of just how much unlike people that you are and how you would not mesh well together, not in the current place that God has you or for where he's taking you. Okay. So a lot of people, uh, I don't know if I mentioned in the dream that nobody brought me any gifts. I think that's another part I might've left out. Nobody in that dream purchased any gifts for me, but it was a celebration. So you mean to tell me you're at a birthday party for a person and you don't come with anything. You come empty handed. So a lot of times these people will come empty handed. They, they don't, they don't put nothing into you. They don't pour anything into you. They come empty handed. You won't come empty handed to them. I've had people in real life where I have blessed them on their birthdays and uh, anytime my birthday come around, nothing, nothing. I've experienced this guys. I'm telling y'all, I have experienced this nothing. And you would expect that if it's a friend or even a family member, even a family member, you would expect that the same type of love and care that you show for others, they would be in return showing that same type of love and care back for you. And I'm not saying that you should expect things from people. What I'm saying is, I think y'all get what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you uh, match the person's energy, what the person is putting out there to you, match it. If the person blesses you or they treat you well, bless them and treat them well. If the person doesn't gossip about you or mistreat you, don't gossip about them or mistreat them. Do you see what I'm saying? So the, all of the, the, all the effort that I put into these different people, when it came time for the big thing for me, they all showed up, but they showed up empty handed. And not only did they show up empty handed, they showed up with a bunch of a uh, gossip, a bunch of fakeness, a bunch of uh, stress. And it was just crazy. But it's so crazy because in the dream, I was like, well, I don't care. I said, I'm, I'm big on celebrating myself, you know? And I went over there and I said, this cake right here is all, um, all that I need. I need the cake and the spread on the table, all the good food that was set up for me. I said, and I know very well how to celebrate myself in a room full of fake people. So there are a lot of people who are going to be fake and they're just going to be nosy and want to attach themselves to you and uh, treat you wrong for no reason at all. Okay. And some people don't even understand uh, 
They don't understand the big picture. They don't understand the big picture. Some people know what they're doing. Some people know when they're mistreating you. They know when they're being a little bit nasty. Um, and let me tell you something in things of God, when people don't understand the things of God and you understand the things of God and you're going to the right and they're going to the left, you on the narrow path and they're on the broad path. It ain't going to work that those relationships just aren't going to work. They're not going to work because you're not going to see eye to eye. They're unequally yoked relationships. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work, which is why I was like, you know, these people got to go. I don't want this kind of stuff around me. Okay. So the Lord is saying, you know, guys, you're going to have to take heed. Uh, when he shows you something, take heed, pay attention. Um, the Lord is going to bless a lot of you, uh, with a lot of different things and, uh, just be watchful because it'll be a lot of people just trying to attach themselves to you all because of the blessing. That's all. They just want a piece of where you're, where you are, where you're going, where God is taking you. They even want a piece of the new you. They don't mind coming. You got a lot of these people that don't mind taking uh, a piece of the new you after God has done all that work on you. They're going to come and try to take a, all this off of you. And bring about all this confusion and all this crap and all this junk God done got, uh, uh, he's done away with, you know? So why be tied to people who are unwilling to heal, who are unwilling to do the work? Why be tied to them? It's not that you got hatred in your heart to them, but if they're unwilling to do the work, you guys ain't got nothing in common. You have nothing in common. Okay. And so that's the message. Let me go ahead and <clears throat> Jemiah 9 and 4. Let everyone be on guard against his neighbor and do not trust any brother because every brother deals craftily and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Y'all watch out for these type of people. I'm telling y'all, listen, I don't just be gossiping and slandering people like that. Watch out for these type of people, okay? Um, and some people come and try to act like they, you know, joking with you and they're not even joking. Them people be real serious about some of the stuff they be saying and they try to play it off like they're just joking, you know, just to bring confusion and heartache and stress. You don't need any of that. Um... Let's see. Second Corinthians eleven twenty six. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my courtmen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. There are dangers everywhere. There are false people all over the place. And it's not just dealing within your family or old friends or even the friends that you have. There may be some false people amongst those people. Okay. Um, you really, when you're doing things for the Lord, you really just have to say, okay, God, I need you to, you know, go ahead through here, through all these relationships I have. And show me the hearts of these people that are around me. Are they for me or are they not for me? Okay. And you need to be ready to deal with whatever outcome comes from you asking that. Okay. Because if you're sincere, you really want to know now and you pray about it. God's going to show you. Um, Micah 7 and 5. Do not trust in a neighbor. Do have do not have confidence in a friend from her who lies in your bosom. Guard your lips. Everybody guard your lips, <laughs> including me, including me. And I don't talk to people like that, but I, even for new friends, even for new people that may be entering your life there, God has, uh, people that he has designated to walk out this journey with us. Okay. There are some people that will come. They will be seasonal. Okay. They will just be there to, uh, do a certain thing or you're there to do a certain thing for them. 
uh, to help in some some way, but that's not meaning that that those individual people are actually going to be lifelong friends. You understand what I'm saying? But then there are people that God will bring into your life that are actually going to be lifelong people. Some of them even closer than blood, than your blood people. Okay. But you have to allow God to direct you to those people and be patient while he brings them into your life. Some people are impatient. You know, I mean, I, I at times have found myself like, oh my gosh, how long you gonna have me without somebody that's really close, you know, but listen, guys, this thing is real out here. Walking with God is real. Walking and denying yourself and going through what you got to go through and working on yourself every single day and doing the work of the Lord while fighting spiritual warfare all day, every day. It's a lot that goes into working for God and being a child of God. It's a lot to it. Okay. And we can't afford to be having ourselves connected to people who aren't on the same page. Okay, because a lot of these people come in and they just going to be trying to destroy what it is that God is doing through you. You got to be very cautious. Um, mm. Proverbs 6 and 19, a false witness who utters lies and one who spreads strife among brothers. Stay away from them. Mm hmm. Um. Matthew 24 and 10. This is one y'all can take. Y'all need to really listen to this. At that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. So y'all have to realize we living in them days now. All this time of some everybody, my friend and everybody, my family and all this stuff. No, absolutely not. Okay. You, God is your family. God comes first. Everything else comes after him. And if you want to, you want to either walk the path God has for you and do it the way he wants you to do it, or you want to do it your way and get caught up in a bunch of mess with a bunch of people who don't even have your best interest at heart. They don't care about you. They don't care about God. They just care about what is it in it for them. Okay. So, you know, priorities I'm hearing priorities, everybody priorities need to be checked. Um, Oh, God, that's whoo. <laughs> this is a good one. Proverbs 13 and 20. He who walks with a wise man will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Child, I don't want to be in the companion of fools and suffering harm. Uh uh. Um, let's see. Proverbs 10 and 18. I'll probably read just a couple of more. He who conceals hatred has lying lips and he who spreads slander is a fool. And guys, listen, I am probably, um, I'm almost out of time here. <clears throat> Leviticus 19 and 16. You shall not go about as a slanderer among your people and you are not to act against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. We're reading in Leviticus now as part of our devotion time. That's the book me and my children are in currently. So guys, that's going to be it for this message. I pray that you guys have gotten whatever you need from this message. Uh, again, guys, listen, um, when it's time for your celebration, you want people there that are celebrating with you. You don't want people around you that are not really for you, um, that are just going to be there to be there. 
Okay, you want genuine people there that genuinely are happy because you've made it. They're genuinely happy to celebrate special occasions with you. They're generally happy to spend time with you just because you don't want people there that are there to bring about chaos and confusion, uh, that are, that still have the spirit of hatred and jealousy on them and envy and different things like that. You don't need that. You don't need that. You know, if you're anything like me, I'm the type of person that loves my peace. I love to be by myself doing things by myself and I enjoy my company, you know, and so anyone that comes around me, they got to be real. I don't like, um, I don't like picking up stuff that, that makes me feel a certain way. I don't like to pick it up because once I pick it up, I get sick. So it, my body and everything operates different when I'm around certain things. Okay. So I handled myself well in that dream. I do believe the rest of you guys will handle yourself. Well, I do believe the young lady that says she didn't pay them any attention. I believe that meant that God doesn't want us to pay any attention. He does not want us to pay these people who are mockers, who are envious, that are jealous of us. He wants for us to give them zero attention. We need to give 100% of our attention to the Lord, not to the mockers, not to the liars, not to the haters. I mean, and even if God has you speaking on the subject of haters, uh, because Jesus did have them, um, he doesn't want you just giving yourself over to what they are, who they are. Okay, he wants us to go on and focus on what it is that he's called us to do. Okay, um, and yeah, so that's the message. Uh, like I said, I pray you guys have definitely received something from it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, don't be going and making no enemies, no haters, your friends. Don't be so foolish. Don't be so impatient that you just make anybody your friend um take time to just take a moment and ask god what are these people here for what are they supposed to do in my life what am i supposed to give to them in their life okay find out what that is and don't make it something that it's not okay if it's just that you're the friend you're meeting or the new person you're meeting is just for one particular thing and it's just for that season let it be for just that thing and for that season and don't try to overdo it okay because a lot of us get in trouble by you know i can't stand i, I just can't i can't deal with people who are just all about themselves like that i have a hard Y'all listen, I, 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 oh, it just turned me off. I don't like people who are all about themselves because I could never do that. Uh, when I say I could never do that, I'm telling y'all I would never. I'm not an all about myself person. Okay. So I don't get people who are, but you got a lot of people that are out there like that. And you, like I said, you got a lot of people that will show enough, celebrate with you and hate your guts. They will show enough, smile with you and be stabbing you in the back. They were sure enough be sitting around having a meal with you like Judas and get right back up and go sell you off. So I'm just saying, guys, I mean, this stuff is out here, but I don't know why I went back into that. But like I was saying, <laughs> like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you guys who have joined the family and um, I will catch you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.